good afternoon, everybody. As, as mentioned, I'm here today to talk about the new NSBA guide to navigating routine steel bridge design. Here's an outline of what we're going to cover in the presentation today. We'll start with a little bit of background and history, and then we'll uh, describe the concept of the guide, which is different from most design guideline documents you've seen before. After that, we'll take a look at the guide itself and show you how you can use it, and then we'll wrap things up with a quick summary. So let's start by talking about the need for some way to navigate through all that good material that's in the Ashtow LRFD bridge design specifications to find just the stuff that most designers need for the routine bridges that they design on a day in, day out basis. The Ashtow LRFD bridge design specs are generally very good and very comprehensive. They're also very thick and consequently can be a little bit overwhelming and sometimes difficult to use. Not every provision in the BDS applies to every structure, but sometimes it's hard to tell what does apply. The bottom line is that it would help designers, especially less experienced designers, if there was some way to identify just the provisions that are applicable to a particular type of design, say, for example, the design of a routine steel eye girder bridge. Now, the guide is intended to help designers filter through the Ashdow LRFD bridge design specs and find just the provisions that are applicable to routine steel eye girder bridge design and to provide some helpful guidance and tips along the way. A big thank you is due to the peer reviewers, over 20 folks who donated time to review the guide and provided a lot of really valuable feedback. The peer reviewers were selected to try to cover a broad spectrum of designers from both big and small organizations. So that's some history of how this uh, guide came together, where it came from, but what exactly is this guide and what makes it different from other design guidelines that you might've seen before? As I mentioned, the Ashto LRFD bridge design specs are comprehensive, which is both good and bad. Just about anything you might need to know about designing structural steel for a transportation structure can be found in the Ashto LRFD bridge design specs, but finding it can be a challenge. Furthermore, not getting trapped in provisions that don't apply can be a challenge as well. So the first function of this guide is to act as a filter by providing a determination of whether a given article is applicable to the design of a routine steel eye girder bridge or not. Next, the guide provides some discussion. The Ashto LRFD BDS has very extensive and very helpful commentary. The commentary does a very good job of explaining the background and nuance of a given provision of the code, but it often does that without reference to context. Now that's understandable. Many of the code's provisions apply to more than one type of design application, but this guide is focused on only one type of design application, the design of superstructures for routine steel eye girder bridges. Being in that very well-defined box allows the guide to place the code provisions in a specific context. Finally, it's important to keep in mind the audience for this guide. The guide is expected to be used by designers who are less experienced in the, in the design of steel girder bridges. Now to understand the guide and how it works, you need to understand a few key concepts, including first, the definition of a routine steel eye girder bridge for the purposes of this guide. Next, the various applicability determinations that are used in the guide. And then the discussions that are in the guide. And we'll go through each one of these three items in detail over the next few minutes. But before I do that, I wanna make it very clear that the guide is not meant to replace the Ashto LRFD BDS. The guide is meant to be a supplement to the BDS. The intent is that a designer would have both the guide and the BDS open side by side. The BDS presents the Ashto requirements and their associated commentary. The guide just tells you which of those requirements might apply to the design of a routine steel eye girder bridge and how to implement them in that context. Now, as I just mentioned, we had to define a very limited box that this guide would work in. A large number of bridges in the US fall into a category that can loosely be called routine. Straight bridges with little or no skew, no geometric com complexities, and common elements assembled in simple framing patterns. And if you think about it, the limitations listed here all point to a simple choice for analysis methods, line girder analysis. And that's a key point here. We set up the definitions of a routine steel line girder bridge to be a bridge that could, and in fact should, be designed using line girder analysis. The guide includes a simple checklist. If you answer no to any of the questions, the bridge does not satisfy the definition of a routine steel eye girder bridge for the purposes of this guide. But we do allow a little bit of wiggle room, a little room to exercise some engineering judgment. The key criteria is that it would still be reasonable and not debatable to design the bridge using line girder analysis. So what does a routine steel eye girder bridge look like? Well, here's an obvious example of a pair of bridges that would fit the definition. And here's an example of a bridge that would not fit the definition. Now here are a couple of bridges that probably fit the definition. They're straight 
bridges with straight girders, not too severe of a skew, reasonable span lengths. And if you look very closely at the right photo, you can see that the bridges also have a slightly curved deck, but just barely so. The overhang widths varied a little bit over the straight girders, but these bridges could and were designed using line girder analysis. Next, let's look at the applicability determinations. You can see that they're relatively straightforward. First, applicable. This is pretty clear. The given provision that's being addressed is fully applicable to the design of a routine steel eye girder bridge. Next is partially applicable. Now the discussions become really important in cases like this. Sometimes part of a given article is really applicable and really important, but other parts are unrelated to the, to the design of a routine steel eye girder bridge. The discussion helps the reader sort this out and understand why. Next is conditionally applicable. So what's up here? Well, some provisions are applicable only in certain situations. For example, the web load shedding factor R sub B, it's only applicable to continuous steel plate girders and only if you have a slender web. If you have a compact or non-compact web, you don't need to worry about R sub B. Next is not applicable. This sounds simple, right? But you would be amazed how many of the code provisions are not applicable. Sometimes the reason why they're not applicable is not immediately obvious to the novice designer. And then finally, we have beyond the scope of superstructure design. This determination category covers items that may be applicable to the design of the bridge overall, but not to the superstructure. Now, in addition to an applicability determination for each article, the guide also provides a discussion. The discussions first explain the why of the applicability determination, and then as appropriate, the discussions provide some helpful tips or suggestions for how to implement a given AASHTO provision. The discussions also include lots of references and hyperlinks to various industry design guidelines and design aids. So that's the basic concept, but we're going to show you next what that concept looks like. In terms of how this, this, this design guide will be delivered, there are going to be two formats. The first one is available today. There's a full PDF of the entire guide available to you right now, free for download from the NSBA website. You can use the PDF copy of the guide as an interactive design aid. The guide features extensive internal hyperlinks and bookmarks intended to help the reader more easily navigate through the guide in, in an order that follows the general sequence of the design of a steel girder bridge. We'll show that to you shortly. The guide also includes extensive hyperlinks to external resources, all of them free. These include guideline documents, design examples, and design software. Now, what you see in this PDF version of the guide is kind of a poor man's version of what we hope will eventually be offered as a web-based interactive design aid. Now here's the table of contents of the guide. Now some of you may be noticing that it's over 400 pages long. The guide is not meant to be read from cover to cover. Let me say that again. The guide is not meant to be read from cover to cover. Actually, the part of the guide that you will most commonly use is only about 30 pages long. And as you will shortly see, it's very graphical and not very text heavy. So let's break this down a little bit. The sections highlighted in yellow include the scope, the determination definitions, and terminology. You might read these only once in your life, just to get oriented. The section that's highlighted pink is a list of useful references. You might never look at this, since as you will see in the course of this presentation, you can access just the perfect reference you need at any given moment from within the guide itself. The sections that are highlighted in purple include sections one, two, three, four, and six. Those correspond to the sections in the AASHTO bridge design specs. And in the guide, they house the discussions of each article in the AASHTO bridge design specs. This is the part that I do not want you to read from cover to cover. This is the database. You will access the, the discussions in here one at a time and only when you need them. If you want to call this the appendix of the, uh, of the guide, that will be a good description of it. This is about 370 pages worth of the guide. So that leaves the green sections, about 30 pages. This is the heart of the guide. For each project, you might look at the definition of a routine steel eye girder bridge once just to make sure your bridge qualifies. And then you would launch into either the general flow of design tasks or the graphical index of design tasks, which is your outline of how to design a routine steel eye girder bridge. From there, you would choose the design task quick links page that applies to whatever given task you're working on. You're gonna see how all of this works shortly. Now, there are lots of ways to navigate the guide. First of all, there are bookmarks, which can be seen in both Adobe and Bluebeam. And if you don't know where to start, you can always check out the general flow of design tasks. 
This is a list of common tasks involved in the design of a routine steel eye girder bridge. The list is presented more or less in the order that these tasks occur in a typical design, but as most of you know, there's a lot of back and forth involved in bridge design, so please don't take this sequence as a straitjacket on how to step through a bridge design. You'll notice that each task is a hyperlink. If you click on any given task, it takes you to the Design Task Quick Links page for that task. Say, for example, you clicked on Splice Design. That would take you to the Design Task Quick Links page on Splice Design. And here's that page, the Design Task Quick Links page for Splice Design. You can see that it has three color-coded parts. Let's take a closer look at each one. The top part in the green box is labeled Quick Links to Applicable Ashto LRFD Bridge Design Spec Provisions with Discussion. There's a short description of the task and some subtasks. Each bullet point lists one or more Ashto LRFD Bridge Design Spec articles. If you clicked on one of them, it would take you directly to the determination and discussion for that article. Say, for example, you wanted to learn more about the general considerations for bolted field splices. You would click on the 63613A text and it would take you to the determination of applicability and discussion for that article. Just like that, you can get to the article you're interested in and see the determination of applicability. In this case, it's applicable for all routine steel eye girder bridges and then see a discussion of that article. So let's go back now to that design task quick links page for splices and take a look at the other two boxes. The middle part, the light orange colored box is labeled quick links to helpful industry design guidelines, references, and examples. You can see here a link to the reference manual for NHI course 1381, which is a great, extremely comprehensive guide. You can also see a link to the AASHTO NSBA Steel Bridge Collaborations Guideline G12.1 and NSBA's Bolted Field Splice Overview and Design Examples. When appropriate, some additional wayfinding is provided in the form of reference to particular sections within each one of those documents. Now, each of these hyperlinks takes you directly to the document. Let's click on the link for the G12.1 guideline. Just like that, you're taken directly to an online free for download copy of the G12.1 guideline. Now the bottom part of that quick links page, the light blue box includes quick links to useful tools. In this case, there's a hyperlink to the NSBA splice spreadsheet and a short description of it. Now let's see what happens when we click on that link. Just like that, one click of your mouse takes you directly to the NSBA splice spreadsheet on the NSBA website where you can download it for free. By the way, I wanted to point out the four little navigation buttons in the top corner of the page. They include first, the previous page button, the left arrow, which takes you back to the last page that you were on. Next is the bookmarks uh, button, which toggles on or off the bookmarks in Adobe or Bluebeam. Next is the table of contents button, which takes you back to the table of contents page. And then finally is the next view button, the right arrow button, which takes you ahead one view. Say you hit the previous page button, that left arrow, and then you wanted to go back to this page, you would hit the right arrow. So that was one way through starting with the general flow of design tasks. Now, if you didn't like that, you can use the graphical index of design tasks. The graphical index of design tasks is comprised of four pages, each with one or two major design tasks in a colored box. The major groupings include general considerations, deck design, loads, as well as girder design, design of details embracing, and connection design topics. Now, if you look really closely, you'll notice that the blue hyperlinks match the hyperlinks on the general flow of design tasks page. Let me show that to you. You can see that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence of the, of the design tasks. From the graphical index of design tasks, if you hit a given hyperlink to a specific design task, it's going to take you to the page with those green, orange, and blue boxes. So let's see how all of this works. Let's say you were interested in shear connector design. You could go to the graphical index of design tasks box for design of details and bracing and click on the shear connector design. And then just like that, it's gonna take you directly to the design task quick links page for shear connector design. Now let's say that you were specifically interested in fatigue design of shear connectors. Just click on the link to Ashto LRFD article 610.10.2 
And with that, you're taken deep into the heart of the guide to the applicability determination and discussion for Article 610.10.2, Fatigue Resistance Under Shear Connectors. Let's take a closer look at what the guide provides here. First, you can see the determination of applicability. For all routine steel aggregator bridges, this particular article is partially applicable. Why is it just partially applicable? Well, look at the discussion that follows. It says that only the provisions for stud shear connectors should be considered applicable for the routine steel aggregator bridges covered by this guide. There are also provisions for channel type shear connectors in the code, but nobody in the industry uses channel type shear connectors in the design of routine steel aggregator bridges anymore, so that part of the provision is not applicable. Next, you'll see that there's a little bit of discussion, which is fairly self-explanatory, and it starts to tell you how to apply the provision in your design. But wait, there's more. The next two paragraphs get down to some really practical guidance. The paragraph at the top of the slide includes hyperlinks to multiple reference documents, including two NHI course reference manuals and three full design examples in the FHWA Steelbridge Design Handbook. The hyperlinks take you directly to those documents, which you can download for free. The paragraph at the bottom of the slide explains that NSBA's LRFD Simon program will do the work for you. There's a hyperlink to the website where you can download Simon for free. And there's a little bit of discussion about what Simon can do with regard to shear connector design. Okay, now for something completely different. Say that you're already looking at a particular article in the Ashtow LRFD bridge design specs and you wanna know more about what that particular article is saying. You don't have to navigate through the circuitous path to get to that article, you can go straight to it. This is how you do that. Go back to the table of contents. Remember how we broke this down before? Remember that we said that the purple section was the appendix and was considered just reference material? It is, but we've made it easy for you to navigate through that too. So if we're down in that purple zone, say you were interested in that same article 610.10.2, fatigue resistance of shear connectors that we were just looking at a minute ago. Say you wanted to get straight to the discussion of that article. From the table of contents, we can get you there in two clicks of your mouse. First, click on section six in that table of contents page. That pulls up the section table of contents for section six in the guide. Skip ahead a few pages to the page that has 610.10.2. And if you click on that, it takes you directly deep into the heart of the guide, right to the applicability determination and discussion for Article 610.10.2, Fatigue Resistance. Now that was just a quick peek at what the guide offers. So to wrap things up, we talked today about the new NSBA guide for navigating routine steel bridge design. We began by describing a need that led to the development of that guide. And next we talked about the concept of the guide. And then we gave you a quick glimpse, a quick walkthrough of the content of that guide. 